What up, YouTube family? Alex, dude, how much is your first wholesale deal? So this is not my first one. Right, right, but, right. But how much but was your first one? My first one was uh, so it, it's a it's a story, man. So my so my first deal actually turned into a flip. Okay. So and okay. So okay. Hold on, Brad. I just want to know how much was it? It was twenty two thousand, but I, okay. I had to split it with someone. Sure. So your first one was twenty two thousand. How much yeah. is your recent one? My recent one last week was eighty six thousand. Woo! Eighty six G, baby. Yes, sir. Bro, that is life changing money right there, baby. Oh yeah, for sure. So Alex, let's talk about your first one that you uh you closed and made twenty two thousand. It turned into a flip, dude. Let's talk about that. How long that took you, bro? So I found out about wholesaling in. Uh, I think it was November of 2020. Damn, uh, okay. I came across a video of you on TikTok. Dang, appreciate you, and bro. Yeah, and so literally, so that was November, December. I started driving for dollars uh, with a friend. And we we're supposed to do it together. Uh, he ended up getting a, a, like a better job. I don't know. So he went on his own. Uh, I think... December 31st, I walked the property with my wife. Um, that was the, the first lead that came in. Okay. And it, it turned into the deal that, you know, I was looking to to get, I guess you could say. So, uh, so my first deal uh, was, I got it at 122. Okay. ARV was 300. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so you lock, you you lock it under contract for one twenty two. One twenty two. ARV is how much? Three hundred. Okay, hold on. So ARV is three hundred k. How much was the rehab? Bro, so wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on, hold on, <laughs> dude. Because I want everyone to understand the whole fix and flip game, and I've warned all of you. Yeah. Okay, but I just want to know at that time, what do you estimate the rehab to be at that time? Like so when you lock it up. So at that time we had a contractor go out there and he lied, bro, but he told us it was gonna be forty thousand. Okay, hold on. So at that time the contractor went out there, you estimated to be about four uh forty K rehab. Yeah. Hold on a second, Alex. So my so my question to you is why didn't you wholesale but you choose to fix and flip? So that's where I was getting into. So I have an uncle. He's an investor. He buys and holds. He has a lot of rental properties. And my when when I found out about wholesaling, yep. uh, I thought flip the the flipping side was cooler. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, dude, I I was like, man, this is this is a, a good strategy, you know, to make some quick money. But eventually, I want to be a flipper. Right. That was that was like my my thing back then, and so. Uh, when I got it on a contract, I mean, the numbers look so good, man, that I showed it to my uncle and I was like, look, I got this deal. These are the numbers. He looked at it and he was like, you know what? Uh, if you really want to flip it, I mean, I'll, I'll bring that. I'll bring uh, all the money to the table. Okay. I'll buy the deal, uh, pay for the rehab and you just got to take care of it. A hundred percent. I'm not even going to walk the property. You just have to be in that thing. Like, as much as you need to and get it done so i was like perfect you know that's what i wanted so he funded the whole deal and actually before that before i had to talk with him i i had two uh investors go out there i was gonna make twenty five thousand in like 15 days bro but i decided not to wholesale the deal are you with me
Alex, dude, I apologize, bro. Uh, it's all good, bro. Okay, dude, I, oh, bro, I apologize, man. Okay, uh, TikTok, head over to YouTube. I'm going to exit out. Okay, dude. So, Alex, okay, so you're okay. At that time, dude, at that time, your uncle and everything like that, man, what what did you estimate that you guys were going to walk away with and make? Um, I think at the time we we're going to make about 70, 75. Okay. Oh, uh, if, if you... This fix wasn't, and flip. yeah, fix and flip. This was in 2021 when the prices were going. Yep, really, high, really man. good. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah. So at that time, you guys estimated if you fix and flip, you're gonna make about 75k. Yeah. How long? How long did you um? How long did you estimate uh, the rehab time it's gonna take? Uh, contractor at the time he said it was gonna be three months. Okay, said it's gonna be about three months for you to make that, and then. If you were to wholesale it, how much? How much uh, would you have? How much would you have would have made? I had two offers, and both that I was gonna make twenty five thousand in like two three weeks. You were gonna make twenty five k if you were just to wholesale it. Yeah. But instead, you'd be like, you know what, man? I'm gonna I'm gonna for the seventy five k by fix and flip. Dude, tell us about that, man. So, bro, it was it it took us nine months to finish that house. <laughs> All 2021, I had uh, I had another business that I was in. Uh, I, I, I'm still in that. But anyway, so I was uh, at my job. You can say I was working from three in the morning uh, till noon. And then can you see me? I think this is. I don't know what's going on. But while Alex is fixing that, let me tell you guys, I, I'm t I'm, I tell all of you already. Don't ever get into the whole fix and flip game. It looks sexy. It looks like you're going to make a lot of money. But, man, I got a project. Okay, Alex. Yeah, so anyway, so I got that deal. Uh, I thought the flipping side was a little sexier. I took on that with my uncle. He funded the whole deal. And then yeah. I just saw it, like, as a, an opportunity, you know? Right. And, honestly, it, it, it was because I was in that deal for nine months. Going every day, uh, the contractor ended up leaving. He took some of the money. Yep. And uh, we, another thing that, that kind of messed us up on the deal was that I had a dumpster, man, uh, sitting outside the, the, the property. Yep. And so there was an inspector, a city inspector driving by. He saw it. He came in, did an inspection, and our budget went up, you know, by like, 40k just <laughs> from that inspector and so okay there's I don't know. okay so while alex is fixing that issue dude i'm gonna tell you guys my story this is why i tell you guys do not get into the whole fix and flip man take the take the baby money take the 25k and run freaking you know you can you can close on it within two weeks you go do another deal make another 25k no headache no stress wholesaling is just a better way to go i got a i got a deal that when i start out with the fix and flip i was going to make a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and it's everything was going to be done within like everything was going to be done like within like supposedly the project was about six months well guess what happened boom dude it took me over a year and I end up making about 20K on it. I could have wholesale that dang thing, dude, and make a quick 75K. But I didn't. So I made the same mistake as Alex. And I hope that a lot of you that are watching this don't make the same mistake. Go ahead, Alex. Yeah, so uh, point is we ended up being on that flip for nine months. And we spent like 130, man, on the rehab. <laughs> Thankfully, the numbers were so good at that time that yep. it, we still were able to profit uh, twenty two thousand, and then we ended up splitting the twenty two. So I, I got eleven thousand in nine months when I could have made twenty five in you know three weeks two. by myself. Yep. Yeah. So that 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 was my first deal. Uh, I learned a lot though because I learned the whole rehab process. Yep. And now I can even walk a property and kind of see what it needs, you know? Correct. So it, it, it did help me a lot. Um, I don't regret it, you know, so.
YouTube family, I, dude, I, I apologize. The weather, the weather where I'm at is really, really, really bad. So we have some really bad connections uh, with my internet. So I apologize. And I, I appreciate every single one of you that are patient, that are being here. But the weather is really bad where I'm at right now. So, and I'm willing to jump on and dude, this is like, I hate wasting time. Like, this yeah. is dude, like, okay, Alex, uh, just keep going, man. I don't know where yeah. you left off. Yeah, so on that deal, uh, we ended up making twenty two thousand in nine months, and like I said, I could have made twenty five in like three weeks, you know. And then so and then so that was twenty twenty one. I basically I didn't wholesale, and I only ho I only got another deal right after that. Uh, but those were my two deals, my first year in twenty twenty one. Then the second deal after selling that house, uh, I think it was like a month later, I got a deal. Uh, only made seven thousand, but we closed in ten days. Damn. Okay. And I was like, damn. Like I made <laughs> seven thousand in ten days, and then uh, eleven thousand in nine months with a flip. Yep. So, and and then, well, well, the thing is that seven thousand dollars, you didn't have to risk a boatload of money. You didn't have yeah. to put out like a bunch of time dealing with contractor, babysitting them, dealing with the the city, getting all the permit, the rehab, all that headaches and all that bullshit. Yeah. And the thing with me that at the beginning, I didn't really, I was scared of wholesaling, bro, to be honest, because yeah. uh, I'm an immigrant. So I always thought like my accent was bad and I always thought like wholesaling was like uh, all sales, you know? Right. And and it is at the, at the end of the day. But uh, that, that was like my biggest fear. Like, man, I can't talk to these people. You know, I can't say some of the words and shit like that. So. But now, bro, I, I mean, I'm over all that, man, you know, <laughs> so. Well, bro, but. after, dude, af, af, after you close some deals, after you stack that money up, you're confident, bro. Oh, you're just, yeah. You, yeah, you yeah. just went from five feet to freaking six, six point five, bro. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, dude, now, Alex, I know a lot of the people, you know, if you're an immigrant, if you feel like you have that accent and you feel like, man, I don't know if I can do this. You know, all these excuses, I can tell you right now, you're either making excuses or you're making money. Yeah. One of my dude, Alex, one of my other students, his name is um, um, his name is Andrew. He's Vietnamese, bro. His accent are worse than you and I worse, bro. <laughs> the dude, dude, bro, the dude was so committed. He made over 40,000 cold call. He just bro. He just closed on his biggest deal ever. Bigger, bigger than mine. Two hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars. Wow! Let's go. Yeah, so he is going to be on my next interview, man. Two hundred and eighty-eight G's, bro. He can literally, dude, take two year off and still be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now, Alex, let's talk about your most recent deal, which is the eighty-five uh, K, bro. Let's. So I want you to break that down. How you got the lead? How you negotiates, etc., man. So it, it kind of goes with, with, with my journey, my story. So in 2021, only two deals, 2022, uh, probably closed around seven deals. All the deals were like uh, average of like $10,000. Okay. And then in 2023, uh, I closed at the beginning of the year or actually around this time, uh, I closed three deals and I had like 70 K man around 70. Okay. And then, I, bro, I decided to go all in and I got an office, st started hiring people uh, with a friend. And, bro, six months later, I get another good deal. And, I, and it was a flip, too. I decided to take on another flip. And I was like, man, fuck it. I'm going I'm to a, I'm a flip this one. I, I have some experience now. And... 2023 you know interest rates went up and everything was slowing down in the market so i ended up losing like 42,000 on that deal damn okay and uh then after that man i just kind of stopped for a little bit a couple of months and i literally got back on it uh i think by the end of last year 23 23 uh i closed the deal last month in um december it was a thirteen thousand assignment fee, and then yeah. now this one, the 80, 80, 86. So the eighty six thousand, uh, it was ten acres. It was land. 
uh, I got it on a contract for one ninety, and I sold it for two seventy seven. Dude, wait a second. So it's 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 bare land. Yeah. Well, it it had uh utilities too, so it was cleared everything. So it was it, it was good to go, and actually, uh, it was a a good deal for the investor too because right. the ARV on that land was like three fifty. Okay. D damn, dude. Yeah. Dude, so the a so the ARV on that uh, on that ten acres. So I I suppose that you probably end up selling this to some kind of a developer or a builder. Uh yeah yeah he okay. was he, yeah he's building houses around around that area so nice yeah so now dude so basically this ten acres ready to go got utilities everything is in place people whoever it is just gonna buy just need to go down to the city get a permit and then start building yes well hey that ten acre do they need to do they need to go through the subdividing or has all of that been done no it it hasn't been done so okay if, yeah he's gonna have to do all that. Got you, bro. Okay, so the ten. Okay, now how do you found the seller? Uh, driving for dollars, bro. It was in my backyard, pretty much. Uh, it was about twenty minutes from here, and okay. I know the area. And I mean, it, it it was vacant forever because I used to drive around there when I was younger too, and they yep. never. I guess the so that when I talked to the seller, his plan was to build a house, and he never got to, and he just ended up, you know selling it he got it for 60k back in 2010 and then got it. sold it to me for 190 so it's making good money bill made some money and then i made some money good for you bro <laughs> so the so so the 10 acre was a drive for dollars yeah okay now you got the seller now how did you okay now okay how how much did it cost you to lock the property in a contract how much did it how much did it cost me yeah, like uh, the EMD, the, er Bro, the earnest money uh, deposit. Nothing. I I I use a contract, and someone gave this to me a couple of years ago, and when they gave it to me, I just got rid of the earnest money part. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, I just send it that way, and they don't even pay attention to it, and they they sign, you know. Right. So for everyone that's watching this, I definitely want to address this. Okay. So typically, when you talk to a seller directly. Right, not an agent. They don't deal with an agent, or they haven't gone through an agent. Most seller do not know about the EMD, which is the earnest money deposit. So typically, if to me, if the seller doesn't bring it up, there's no reason why you need to bring it up. All right. So what you're gonna do is that typically when you send the 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 contract over to the seller to sign, you can put whatever amount that's on there. I understand there are some of you that put zero amount, whatever, but I can tell you right now. That you got to make sure in the that there needs to be an exchange of money. So ten dollars, right? Ten dollars to lock it up, and then it needs to go. You you need to send it into a title company along with the along with that ten dollar earnest money deposit, because that's when the contract becomes legit. So let's just say you get the seller to sign the contract. You hold on to the contract. You never drop it off the title company. You never open escrow. You never put in your EMD. Which means that contract is not legally buying, which means that the seller can obviously sell it to somebody else. But typically, most seller would assume that you would have sent it in and do your thing. So they, so they like they don't know the process, right? But I'm just saying, when you start to do more of this and then you start to deal with people that are a little bit more experienced, you need to understand the process, how it works is that once you get a, a, a seller on a contract, you send it to a title company, you let the escrow agent know, obviously, you want to open up escrow. They're going to send you a Y instruction, or if you just want to drop off a cashier check or whatever it is of the EMD, which is the earnest money deposit, which means now that contract has been legally buying. Sell, seller cannot sell to somebody else, all right? But in the contract, obviously, it protects us as a wholesaler. So we're the only one that has the right to cancel the contract. Seller cannot. Within that time period that they're under contract with us, they cannot sell to nobody. If you really worry about it, you can cloud the title. So if you cloud the title and the seller try to sell it to someone else behind your back, dude, every single time, it doesn't matter what title company, they're going to pull it up. There's going to be an issue on the title. There's going to be like a lien on the title. So the seller, like you will have to be the one who have to remove it for the seller to sell it to somebody else because they got the, because they got the property in the contract with you first and it shows on there. And that's what clouding the title is. It's like uh, the word is called 
moment. I, I can't even uh, pronounce the word. But anyways, dude. Okay, so now I want to know from you, Alex, is how do you found the buyer? Uh, so actually this buyer, uh, I had talked, I had sent him a few properties last year. Um, and he was just looking for land at the time or pretty much it's what he does. So, uh, he just told me last year, Hey, I'm looking for some land. He sent me some zip codes. Um, and, it, but I got him from Facebook. It was a Facebook group. Okay. Uh, got his number and then we were in contact for like five months, uh, because I was sending him other properties, but he never bought anything uh, until this one. Because it, it was actually something that he was, you know, looking for. Nice, man. So the 85K, dude, how quickly did you close? We closed in 20 days. Damn, dude. 85 yeah. Gs in 20 days. Yeah, we, Bro. yeah, 20 days. Exactly 20 days. Bro, even doctor. Doesn't make 85k in 20 days, baby. I know. <laughs> dude, dude, and an immigrant. Hey, um, Alex, did you graduate from high school? No, I same dropped here. out. I dropped out uh 11th grade because uh dude, I same. Work. Yeah, I wanted to work and make some money. So, dude, same here, bro. Same here, dude. Dude, uh, dude, honestly, dude, when I hit freshman, I was mentally already gone. Like, I my body was with <laughs> my body was in class, but my brain was elsewhere, dude. I was like, yeah. man. Bro, dude, teacher. Like, I just want my teacher to show me how to make some money, man. I just want to make some money, you know? Bro, at the time, my honestly, my mindset was all fucked up. So I <laughs> I, I wasn't thinking about and money. Here. I was thinking about the, the parties and, oh. the and all that bullshit. Now, oh, really? that yeah, now I'm, I don't do none of that. You know, I, I've been sober for, for two and a half years. Dude, and, it's you. And, and the crazy thing is that uh i changed my whole life man because of uh real estate Good like you, bro. like when i uh when i started you know into wholesaling yep uh like i said my my i thought my accent was bad community yep. communication skills were super bad yep um so i started reading bro something i had never done not even in school you know yep. started reading uh listening to podcasts and all these things that you know everybody's doing out there how old are you now dude and i did 75 hard bro i lost 40 pounds and dude, that's for you just, baby yeah that shit just really like changed, changed my, your life my mind you know and, and so now when i talk to a seller it, it's more like a like a you know like talking to a friend and yeah and, and trying to help them out you know good for you man so, yeah yeah that so it's not even it it hasn't even been about the money because I don't feel like I've made much money yet. Right. But but I know with what I'm doing now, you know, I, I will, man. And one day it's gonna be crazy, crazy money like you. Good, good, dude. <laughs> good for you, man. Hey, Alex, man. How old are you now, dude? I'm 30. You're 30. Dude, yeah. I just turned 40 in January. Nice. Bro, and I can tell you, dude, like, so when I was so I met the wifey when I was like 18, bro. Yeah. Like Lon, Lon, Lon and I, Lon and I were like, basically I didn't do any of the drinking, the party, dude. Like, um, the only thing that I had to overcome and do it is self, self insecure. I was so insecure, Alex. I didn't want to, I didn't want to go to the mall. I didn't want to be around anybody, dude. I thought that dude, I thought my whole life was work at a J O the B come home, play video games. And then on the weekend, I would go hang out with my, you know, my family playing a little poker, you know, play, play a little <laughs> poker. And I thought yeah. that I thought that was going to be my whole entire life. Right. And then just grind until I was 65, dude. I didn't dude, I, bro. I didn't have big goals, big dreams or anything like that. The only thing I got is like, you know what, man, I got the work ethic. So whatever, mm -hmm. whatever I decide to do, dude, I'm just willing to grind. Like I, I'm willing to put in 12, 13, 14 hours or whatever it is. Right. But. I didn't get into the drinking, the club, the drugs. Like I grew up like being a really, really, really good boy, bro. Like do none of that. Like people would ask me, well, Kong, don't you want to try? Why, dude? <laughs> don't you want to try? <laughs> nah, bro. I mean, like, dude, like, yeah, yeah. well, what's the benefit, right? So There's anyways, no dude. But um, for, for anyone that's watching this, dude, I'm telling you right now is that you got to get your priorities straight. And I think this is the yeah. biggest thing. Alex, why people are hard for, for hard for regular people to become successful is because there's so much noise and that they don't have their priorities straight. And here's what I mean right. by you need to have your priorities straight. So number one is most people don't know what they want to do in life. 
The sooner mm -hmm. you figure out I bomb at you, the better off you be. So let's just say, you know what, Kong, I want to focus on building my, my career. I want to focus on building my business. So when your friend calls you, hey, let's go party, let's go clubbing, dude, it's not your priority. So guess what you do, dude? You say no. And then eventually those kind of friends that keeps on calling you, it becomes not in your, it, they, they will not be your friend anymore because your yeah. priority is becoming financially free and their priority is staying at a J O the B. Yeah, like, I don't, so I don't, I, I don't talk to anybody that, that I used to talk to yeah, from, same. you know, 2020, let's just say. Uh, and I quit everything, bro. Like even family parties, I come from a big ass family and they have parties all the time. I don't, I don't go at all anymore. I haven't been to a party, even a yeah. family party in so long. And so, you know, they might take it wrong, but in reality, I still love them. You know, yep. it's just that my wife and I are like yep. really on the same page and Good trying to grow this man. So, and plus I have kids, bro. I'm trying to be a better dad too, you know, Good. and dude, it, it's hard when yeah. you have, like you said, when you have so much noise, it, it, dude, bro, yeah. man, Alex, dude, I can relate a lot to your story, man. There were like three to five, there were probably a, a period of three years that I didn't go home. I didn't hang out and dude. And honestly, dude, I didn't feel like I missed out at all because Lon and I was so focused on, you know, become financially and making a boatload of money and then go back and take care of the family. You know, like just, uh, I think three years, three, two or three years ago, I don't remember. We bought Lon mom's a house, retire her, took care of her, took every, took care of her, everything. Now there's nothing she has to worry about. Right. Mm -hmm. So Lon and I were like, dude, somebody in the family got to make the sacrifice. Right. Exactly. So if, no. if you guys, if you guys give up on your goals, your dreams, dude, okay, well, I have to do this then because yeah. I got mom to take care of. Yeah, for sure. And and, and I never really had, I mean, I had some, uh, some jobs, you know, but most of my life I was always um, self-employed because I yeah. couldn't even get a good job, bro. I mm. literally just got my green card in 2022. Hey, good so, for you, bro. Yeah, so I couldn't get a regular job, you know, so I I was like always trying to do it my way and, uh, you know, self-employed, whatever. And yeah, man, we changed everything around, man. Even la even last year, bro, and uh, I think it's been, what, like three, four months? I think it was November. Yeah. Uh, I didn't buy it. I, I wish I did, but I know in the future, that's one of my goals, but my parents always lived in a mobile home since mm. we got here from mexico and i was able to put them in a in a house with an acre in november and that's because uh i found this lead uh the guy uh was willing to do owner finance nice and with five percent interest rate bro we got a, a deal for it was so we ended up getting it at 260 and it appraised at 325. <laughs> so i put them in a house with all this equity, bro, you know? And so, yeah, like this shit has changed my life in so many good ways. You good know? for you. Yeah. Bro, dude, Alex, man, I can, I can relate to you in so many different levels, bro. Same here. Like when I met Lon, her mom, her mom was living in a single Y mobile home. And Lon was like, dude, her ultimate goal at that time, dude, is how can she escape the how can she escape the trailer park and then move into a house and move her mom away from it? Like that's, that was her ultimate goal, bro. Yeah. And that's, you know, and we obviously make the sacrifice, put in, put in work, no party, no, no vacation, nothing, dude. It's just hustle and grind. A lot of you think that you can bake the pie and, and eat at the same time, but I'm telling you right now that you, you just have to make the sacrifice. You just need to know what's your priority. You know, if your priority is not your financial freedom, you know, then obviously you're going to go party. You're going to go clubbing. You're going to do all this shit. And then when you make that money, guess what you do? Instead of saving it, investing it, buying asset, you're out buying stupid shit. That yeah. is why a lot of you, dude, you're broke, dude. That's why you don't have any money, regardless of how much you make. You say the same shit when you make $20 an hour. You say the same shit when you make 40 bucks an hour. You say the same shit when you make 50K a year. 100k a year 200k a year you will stay the same shit because you know why man look at the things that you buy look at the things you're spending your money on no wonder why you got no money you see and, some, and, and something has to get sacrificed yeah for sure and and see those things i feel like uh we just grow up in that environment so it's right. so normal like in 2020 before i started wholesaling i was i had an eighty thousand dollar truck 
Oh, damn. And bro, I went from that to yeah. a $5,000 car because I wanted this to take off. Good for you. And uh, so that house that I that we had, I bought two rentals with that with that equity. Um, my, I had to get rid of my wife's car, bro. We've been through it, it's been a journey, bro. Yeah. But I know for a fact that it's gonna pay off. Good for you. And um, and with God, bro, I'm 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 a I know he's your friend Ryan Pineda. Yeah. And I'm a I'm a big fan, bro. I you know so I I've learned a lot from him and good. I, I actually started reading the Bible because of him. So oh nice. I think I think all the little things that that you can do today will you know start paying off in the future. I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you, man, dude. And uh, Alex, I gotta say, man, like for like for me, it's hard. It's dude, it's extremely hard to go from the good life, like the life that you have right now, and then all of a sudden you have to downgrade your lifestyle. Yeah. Dude, it's extremely hard. Like, dude, like you, like your why has to be so strong. But for Lon yeah. and I, it was easy because we went hard. Like we had nothing. So it was for us, like we built up as we go. So when Lon and I was making, dude, 100, 200K working at the mall, bro, because our first little business was a hair extension kiosk in the mall. And I was, I was, dude, we, I was selling hair extension, bro. And, um, <laughs> Bro, we were, dude, we were making, I think, between 100 to 200K a year, and I was still driving a 1997 Honda Accord. We were wow. just stacking the cash away. Friends and family were driving by, you know, new car, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, the Burberry, the Rolly. We, yep. dude, Lon and I like stupid, right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we didn't tell them, but dude, we look at them. We already know, right? Like the thing that you guys see that, now, listen, I built my mindset over time, but Lon and I always had this attitude was, dude, the goal is to get rich, not look rich, bitch. And that's the reason why you're stuck at the J O the B is because you cannot delay instant gratification. You make 5,000. You see, people go out there, make 100,000 a year. They think they're a bowler. Yeah. Oh, damn, I'm making six. I'm a bowler. So they go into a dealership, dude, buy a $100,000 car. Stupid. Dude, bro, because, I was bro because that hundred thousand dollar car, even though you're making a five hundred dollar uh, payment, oh, it's a five hundred dollar payment a month, dude. But your mindset is corrupted because yeah. you just bought a car that is worth your whole entire year of income. Come on, man, shit, bro. <laughs> you're gonna watch the... Bro, I uh, yeah, that was my mindset. You know, before twenty twenty, like I said, I was forty pounds over. I had an eighty thousand dollar truck. My wife had an Escalade. Uh, I was making 120k a year at that time, yeah. bro. From 120 and living a pretty decent life, right. I went to wholesaling and not making shit for a long time. Damn. And literally got rid of everything. But when we when we uh, decided to sell the house, we we're like, you know what? We have some equity in the house, and we're not gonna be stupid. So Good. we we ended up. I was already cold calling and stuff, so I ended up getting two deals from from uh, from that, and uh, nice. I bought two rentals. I got a sub two and a owner finance deal. Nice. And yeah, I mean that's what that's what we've been doing, man. We don't care about what people think right now. They might think I'm fucking broke, you know. Yes. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> Bro, and, and I and I have been, you know, like the right. I, I think last year things started getting better. And I know this year they're going to get a lot better, but 22, bro. And 21, they were, rough. they were rough, man. Bro. We, I We had to get into, bro. We had to get into personal development and that's the thing that's going to really change your life and Absolutely. take off in any, any business that you get into personal development is the first thing. Dude. Uh, dude, Alex, man, I absolutely agree. And I want to say, dude, congrats on everything, man. And, um, yeah, you, you know, man. see, a lot of a lot of time people wanted to, wanted to change, but they like, oh, like they want to the outer world to change. Dude, the outside ain't going to change shit until you change who yeah. you are. You see, it's not about making the million dollar, my friend. It's the person that you become to make the oh, million yeah. dollar. Dude, yeah. did you see, Alex? I remember, dude, I remember when I first got into real, dude, I can sit here and talk for you forever because I can relate to your story Let's on, on so many different levels. <laughs> Bro, when Lana, when Lana and I first got into real estate, I, I was still driving a 1997 Honda Accord, got a freaking couple hundred G stack in the bank, all right? And bro, my house was, my house is almost paid off. 
Law and I bought it for three hundred fifty thousand, and I think we only owe like fifty thousand on it. I still drive around a nineteen ninety seven Honda Accord, and then we got into real estate, bro. We got into real estate, and I would buy those magnet, and I would put it on the side of my car, and dude, they, dude, friends and family were laughing at me, bro, because yeah. because because the magnet would say because they look at me like. I'm poor. And all of a sudden, this guy driving a beat up 1997 Honda Accord with over 200,000 miles and saying that he's going to buy houses for cash. Dude. Bro, I, bro <laughs> I've dude, been dude, there. Bro, they all look. So, some of my friends and family, they criticize. They criticize. Um, one of my brother in law tells us to take it down because it's a disgrace. Because he's like, oh, so now you guys are bragging. You guys just bought a house and now you guys are bragging like you got money. Dude, there was a time, bro, where I was like, I kind of let a little bit of that get to me. And then my mentor, my mentor told me this, bro. My mentor said, Kong, do you want to make money in real estate or do you don't? Like, do you want to become successful at a real estate investor or do you don't? I said, of course I want to. Because I because I just paid the dude like 25K and then, right? And I was like, well, yeah, dude. He said, well, Kong, how do people, how would people know that you buy houses if you don't advertise, if you don't let people know? Every single person that you run into, you talk and you meet, I want you to tell them that you buy houses. And if they know anybody looking to sell. So he said, Colin, do you want to succeed or do you not? If you don't yeah. want to succeed, dude, then hide. Because Lon and I, dude, Alex, Lon and I was all, always been an underdog. Dude, I apologize for every single one of you that are here. So the weather, the weather where I'm at is freaking su super, super crazy right now. So I apologize with the internet and the in and out. But bro, my my so so my mentor told me that, and I say, like, dude, of course I want right. So I just zone out the noise, dude. I was driving around town. I got a couple lead from that man, and I was just networking and talking to everybody. Cause Lon and I, bro, throughout our whole entire life. Alex, we were brought up in an Asian family where, number one, you don't talk about money. You don't talk about how much you make because it comes off you're arrogant, you're bragging, mm -hmm. all that shit, right? Lon and I has always been an underdog, dude. When I was working the mall, we were making a couple hundred thousand dollars selling hair extensions. And, um, and, and, and my family would come, out, come up and ask me, why am I working here making $8.50 an hour? But Lon and I were making a couple hundred Gs. And guess what? <laughs> problem, well, you know what, man? It's a job. I, yeah. just gotta do, I just got to do what I got to do. So Lon and I act as if we were just an employee. But bro, yeah, and yeah. All, of a sudden, all of a sudden that kiosk got us to buy a house. They were like, dude, Lon and I came from nowhere, bro. Because all of a sudden we were just living in this little shed behind a mobile home park. And everybody thought that I was, you know, making minimum wage. And out of nowhere, boom, bro, we bought a freaking house that are like her, her sister and brother are way older, making way more money than we were at the time. And boom. Yeah. Yeah, and bro. And, 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 shock. No, yeah. I, man, I can relate, man. And, you know, I still I still struggle with a lot of things. Like, for example, always, uh, like, from for example, my wife, um, she's on social media now. And she she's posting about, you know, uh, personal development. Nice. And she, al she always tells me, hey, post about buying houses. Tell yep. everybody you're buying houses. Yep. And bro, sometimes I'm like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to post, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and honestly, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, a big fan. I, I know I need to win and, and, you know, that's probably going to take me somewhere else, but like Alex, right now I'm more like on the, on the, on the download. And, yeah. So, but, but, you know, I, I know it, it is going to take time, but I'll, I'll get there, man. Alex. I got, dude, I, I got something that I want to pitch you, bro. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. <laughs> bro, Alex, if your wife loved creating content on social media, building her brand, building her following, and she wants to like, obviously later monetize it and make a bolo money from it, bro. Um, dude, um, if, if you follow me on Instagram, dude, DM me media. Just DM me media. i like to share with you an opportunity, bro. Because right now I'm taking on like 20 people at a time, cap max. Yeah. And uh, what I'm gonna do is, dude, when people are on there, we're dude, people are on there making money from TikTok affiliate. Uh, 
growing their following like they've never grown before because I share with you all the tips, tricks, secret hacks, and strategies on how to really blow up on social media. So it's not like what you think, Alex. Oh, I'm just going to post, 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 and be patient. Dude, it's, it's not, bro. Yeah. There is a strategy. So you got to know what's working, what's not working. You got you to know what's trending, and you got to be able to stay ahead of the curve to really blow up. Like my Instagram account, the last 30 days, dude, 7.2 million people. And I can tell you right now, dude, so you must follow uh, Uncle G. I'm sure you yeah. follow Uncle G. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure you also follow my buddy, uh, Pineda. Mm -hmm. If you ask Pineda, you DM him, dude, you see all of his business, bro, all of his business, 10x because of one thing, social media. Because yeah. when you're able to get more attention to what you do, and people know about you, dude, because how can people do business with you if they don't know who you are? Because, yeah. in, dude, in today's world, it's not about who you know. Because when, when you're starting from the ground, you know nobody. You're not going to know millionaires. You're not going to know a multimillionaires, right? And nobody nobody wants to know you because you're because you're just start because because you're at your startup, which is you're broke, right? You're at your startup. But, right. bro, but it's now it's who know you, dude, because if you're able to get attention, Everybody wants to be around you because they know that with attention, they can blow all of their business up. So I don't care if you have a business, a service, a product, whatever it is you want to sell. If you can get attention. Okay, bro, how did Pineda getting all these big players onto his podcast? Because he got attention. Yeah. Dude, and, and if you watch Grant's video, there was a short video of, of, of Uncle G showing you a graph of how all of his business just freaking blew up because he, because he went on social media. He figured out the game. And he posts and everything. And dude, me, same thing. All of my businesses impact, like, dude, ev bro, like impact from everything. People can bring you deals, right? If, if that's what you want. Dude, bro, imagine if you don't have to spend another dollar on marketing. Where people bro. just like, De Alex, I've been following you. I love what you do, dude. I got a deal here. I don't know what to do with it. Boom. Can you help me out? So now you can JV. You can tell them to bring you deal. JV with you. What if you're able to start your own local RIA? What if you're, you're able to start your own local meetup? Charge people, you know, basically you can get people to come for free, show them the game, and now you become the expert, right? You become this guy like, dude, I love this guy. And then they bring you the deal. Shit, bro. See, that's the reason people started all these local RIA. Because everybody that are new into the game, they just come to the RIA. They look at you like, dude, you're, you're like the hero. You're teaching them to play the game because you... You basically what you're doing this is you're creating a bunch of affiliate, right? You're having all these little soldiers going out there, dude, getting deals for you, but they don't know what to do. So they bring it back and they're like, Alex, I need help finding a buyer. Or, hey, Alex, I just found this deal. I don't know what to do. you be like, dude, give me the seller contact. Give me the phone. I'll call it. Boom. Dude, the opportunity, Alex, on social media is endless. So anyways, dude, I want to present yeah. you with that opportunity so you can talk to the wife about it. I want to talk to you another one, bro. So let's talk about this, Alex. Okay. I know this is real estate related, dude, but this is freaking the biggest opportunity. Okay. Imagine if you first got into Amazon when Amazon first started. How much money do you think that you will make? Dude, when Amazon first started, there's no competition. So all these people that got in first, bro, were making a boatload of money. Now yeah. you're too late in the game. It's too saturated, right? So that's why now you're creating an account and people doing like all these drop shipping bullshit, dude. Dude, Amazon will ban all of you. It will ban, 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 ban. But dude, TikTok shop is the newest freaking Amazon. So I, dude, I told Lon. So Lon is on TikTok. She has her TikTok shop. She's selling, bro. She, dude, this is crazy. So she's selling the, okay. So Lon and I used to sell hair strainer and hair curler and all that hair extension. I posted on my Instagram. Dude, Lon launched her store. In the last 30 days, she makes $10,000 net, 10 Gs, just in the last 30 days. Now, check this out. I went live with Juan, selling live. Bro, so TikTok <laughs> are pushing you out. Literally, bro, people are throwing money at you. Dude, so, so, she, so she has like a big sale, so she would sell like for $100. Bro, people are ordering left and right. Lon went from one order a day. She started out like two weeks, zero order, then one order. Dude, and then the last one, dude, she got 30 order. Damn. 30 order, bro. Dude, so I think she made like three or four thousand dollars in like an hour or two hour live. Wow. Bro, so 
that's the opportunity that I want to present to you. If that's something that the wife is interested in, all right. Yeah, but dude, she, I'm she telling you, Alex, be. if you're not if you're not focused on building your personal brand right now, documenting your journey, because dude, right now if you start and you document your journey, when you get to the top where you're making 100k a month in wholesaling, dude, you will you. you you have way more credibility, but not just credibility, dude. It's that people can relate to you. They follow you. They see your journey. There are people on here that's that, that saw me start a YouTube when I was started out with uh, 10,000 or uh, just 10 subscribers. And when yeah. they see you, bro, they can relate. Now they have more b belief. They have more faith. They have more confidence. They're like, dude, Alex, I saw his journey. I wish I would have started the same time that he did. So I'm telling you right now, I told on the whole TikTok shop. It'll probably last for like five years. And after that, dude, it'll be saturated like Amazon and something new will pop up. And she's like, dude, Kong, I'm going to squeeze. I'm going to milk this five years. I'm going to make millions of dollars because, bro, it's the opportunity is insane. OK, so that's <laughs> that's all I got, man. Um, but anyways, for those of you, if you're looking to get into wholesaling and you want that hands on coaching. All right. You want to work with me, and my team in 2024 crush it. We can help you build, grow, scale, and automate your wholesaling operations. I'm going to show you how I build a team of seven VAs, run my whole entire wholesaling business. We do completely virtual, pumping out $100,000 a month. Go to coachwithkong.com. Fill out the application, book a call with my team. Alex, how can they connect with you, bro? Or wait, you know what? What are some, what are your last word, man? Bro, I, just, I mean, I just want to tell everybody that's, you know, getting started, man. Just keep going. Just keep going and get into personal development. Just read. Read all you can. I think that's the best uh, the best thing you can do because it, it's just going to open up your mind. And, bro, you're going to be able to do anything, you know, in any business, you know. Love so it. I think that that reading is it has changed my life for sure. Dude, I love it, man. You see. Alex, every single time when we post something, oh, this person make this much, this person makes this much, or I make this much, or I did this. Dude, there's always people that say, ah, no, it doesn't work. See, to me, dude, you, to me, whether you think you can or cannot, either way, you're right. Whether, yeah. you, wh whether you think it's possible or impossible, either way, you're right. But let me tell you this. Only those who think it was possible to go to the moon is the one that actually landed on the moon motherfucker <laughs> all right <laughs> alex dude how can people connect with you dude uh i'm on instagram a lot man alex two x's solis s-o-l-i-s and then follow my my wife man she's throwing a lot of content about love personal it. development so i love it man i appreciate each and every single one of you that are here with me alex i appreciate that you taking the time to jump on and do this man appreciate you dude. yeah man thank you so much for the opportunity man absolutely take care bro you too, bro. Every single one of you, I appreciate each and every single one of you that are here with me and everything that I share and Alex share. I want this, our stories, not to just inspire and motivate you, but to give you the confidence, the self-belief that you too can do this, that you too can achieve the goals, the dreams that you set for yourself. The thing you need to do is you need to stay committed and you need to be freaking determined and let nobody, nothing gets in your way of getting that money. Until next time, you guys, I appreciate each and every single one of you. Take care, and let's go get this money. Man, I'm tired. <laughs>